Hello. Welcome to Jesus for All Two. God's Word, Your Daily Bread. The Bible for February 7th, 2023. Here you will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, the Bread of Life, with the goal of pleasing the Heavenly Father, increasing our faith, and hearing all of the Bible by the end of December 2023. Because the book of Hebrews 11.6 reads, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And Romans 10.17 reads, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And the book of he and the first Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 reads, For we walk by faith, not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. Amen. And the book of John, chapter 14, beginning at verse 23 in the Amplified reads, Jesus answered, If a person really loves me, he will keep my word, obey my teachings, and my Father will love him and we will come to him and make our home, abode, special dwelling place with him. 24. Anyone who does not really love me does not observe and obey my teachings. And the teachings which you hear and have heard is not mine, but comes from the Father who sent me. I have told you these things while I am still with you. Verse 26. But the Comforter, Counselor, Helper, Intercessor, Advocate, strength, Strengthener, Stand by, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to represent me and act on my behalf, he will teach you all things, and he will cause you to recall, will remind you or remind you of, bring to your remembrance everything I have told you. Verse 27, peace I leave with you, my own peace, I now give and bequeath to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you, do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed and do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly unsettled. 28. You heard me tell you I'm going away and I'm coming back to you. If you really love me, you would have been glad because I'm going to the Father for the Father is greater and mightier than I am. Verse 29. And now I have told you this before it occurs so that when it does take place, You may believe and have faith in and rely on me. Amen. And in the book of John 15, 7, it reads, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. And John 6, 63, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. And so the words of life we will hear today, February 7th, are Psalm 45. The New Testament reading will be from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 1 through verse 43. And the Old Testament reading will be from the book of Exodus, chapter 9, verse 1 through chapter 10, verse 29. The prayer will be from... Psalm 23 from the Amplified Version this week. Amen. I'd like to thank every listener to Jesus for all too. I pray that your faith is increasing, your knowledge of the promises and the powers of God, and your ability to walk in the way, the truth, and the life. Living in the abundance, the overflow, that the Lord Jesus Christ redeemed and gave to us by his resurrection, death and resurrection from the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. And doing that work which God called us to do from the foundation of the earth. And if it is a blessing to you, I would ask that you would share Jesus for all two with another and that you would subscribe. Amen. And now Psalm 45. And it reads, My heart is overflowing with a good thing. I recite my composition concerning the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. You are fairer than the sons of men. Grace is poured upon your lips. Therefore God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword upon your thigh, O mighty one, with your glory and your majesty. And in your majesty ride prosperously because of truth. 
humility and righteousness. And your right hand shall teach you awesome things. 5. Your arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies. The peoples fall under you. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. 7. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore God your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. All your garments are scented with myrrh and aloes and cassia out of the ivory palaces by which they have made you glad. 9. King's daughters are among you, honorable women. At your right hand stands the queen in gold from Ophir. 10. Listen, O daughter, consider and incline your ear. Forget your own people also and your father's house. So the king will greatly desire your beauty because he is your Lord. Worship him. 12. And the daughter of Tyre will come with a gift. The rich among the people will seek your favor. 13. The royal daughter is all glorious within the palace. Her clothing is woven with glad. She shall be brought to the king in robes of many colors. The virgins, her companions, who follow her, shall be brought to you. 15. With gladness and rejoicing they shall be brought. They shall enter the king's palace. 16. Instead of your fathers shall be your sons, whom you shall make princes in all the earth. Verse 17 and last. I will make your name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore, the people shall praise you forever and ever. Amen. And this word is already blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. This psalm, I believe, is about us. We are the church. We are the bride. Amen. And our bridegroom is the Lord Jesus Christ. Just as he is the head of the church and we are the body. Hallelujah and glory to God in the highest. Amen, 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 in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this word which is already blessed, and we pray that every hearer has also been blessed in Jesus' name. And now the New Testament reading today, continuing in the book of Acts, beginning with chapter 9. Hallelujah, amen. And it reads, the book of Acts chapter 9, then Saul still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that he, so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. For then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Five. And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the gourds. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Seven. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were open, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him to, into Damascus. 9. And he was three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. 10. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise, and go to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. 12. And in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, so that he may receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. Verse 15. But the Lord said to him, Go. For he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. 17. And Ananias went his way and entered the house. And laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
18. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. 19. So when he had received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. 20. Immediately he preached to Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. Then all who heard were amazed and said, Is this not he who destroyed those who called on this name in Jerusalem, and has come here for that purpose, so that he might bring them bound to the chief priest? 22. But Saul increased all the more in strength, and confounded the Jews who dwelt in Damascus, proving that this Jesus is the Christ. Now after many days were passed, the Jews plotted to kill him. But their plot became known to Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. 25. Then the disciples took him by night and led him down through the wall in a large basket. And when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. Verse 27. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. And he declared to them how he had, been the, how he had seen the Lord on the road, and that he had spoken to him, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. 28. So he was with them at Jerusalem, coming in and going out. And he spoke boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus, and disputed him against the Hellenists, but they attempted to kill him. 30. When the brethren found out, they brought him down to Caesarea, and sent him out to Tarsus. 31. Then the churches throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace, and were edified. And walking in the fear of the Lord, and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. 32. Now it came to pass, as Peter went through all parts of the country, that he also came down to the saints who dwelt in Lydia. There he found a certain man named Aeneas, who had been bedridden eight years and was paralyzed. And Peter said to him, Ananias, Jesus the Christ heals you. Arise and make your bed. Then he arose immediately. So all who dwelt at Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. 36. At Joppa there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is translated Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. But it happened in those days that she became sick and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. 38. And since Lydda was near Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent two men to him, imploring him not to delay in coming to them. 39. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he had come, they brought him to the upper room, and all the widows stood by him weeping, showing the tunics and garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them. 40. But Peter put them all out, and knelt down and prayed, and turned Turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. 41. Then she gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, he presented her alive. 42. And it came, and it became known throughout all Joppa, and many believed on the Lord. Verse 43 and last. So it was that he stayed many days in Joppa, with Simon, a tanner. Amen and amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. As we pray in the name of Jesus Christ is every hero. Ah, my brethren, these are the greater works that the Lord Jesus Christ in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 12 and 13, said that we would do in his name. May we have the grace to set aside our connection with this world and walk in his way, in his truth, and in his life, and do those works in Jesus' name that he left us to do in this time. Amen and amen in Jesus' name. And now the Old Testament reading, continuing today in the book of Exodus with chapter 9, the book of Exodus, chapter 9, and it reads, Then the Lord said to Moses, go, in, go into Pharaoh and tell him, Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, 
Let my people go, that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let them go and still hold them, behold, the hand of the Lord will be on your cattle in the field, on the horses, on the donkeys, on the camels, and on the oxen, and on the sheep a very severe pestilence for. And the Lord will make a difference between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt. So nothing shall die of all that belongs to the children of Israel. 5. Then the Lord appointed a set time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord will do this thing in the land. So the Lord did this thing on the next day, and all the livestock of Egypt died. But of the livestock of the children of Israel, not one died. 7. Then Pharaoh sent, and indeed not even one of the livestock of the Israelites was dead. But the heart of Pharaoh became hard, and he did not let the people go. So the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Take for yourselves handfuls of ashes from a furnace, and let Moses scatter it toward the heavens in the sight of Pharaoh. And it will become fine dust in all the land of Egypt, and it will cause boils that break out in sores on man and beast throughout all the land of Egypt. Verse 10. Then they took ashes from the furnace and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses scattered them toward heaven. And they caused boils that break out in sores on man and beast. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils, for the boils were on the magicians and on all the Egyptians. 12. But the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he did not heed them, just as the Lord had spoken to Moses. 13. Then the Lord said to Moses, Rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. 14. For at this time I will send all my plagues to your very heart, and on your servants and on your people, that you may know that there is none like me in all the earth. 15. Now if I had stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence, then you would have been cut off from the earth. But indeed this, for this purpose I have raised you up, that I may show my power in you, and that my name will be declared in all the earth. 17. As yet you exalt yourself against my people, in that you will not let them go. 18. Behold, tomorrow, about this time, I will cause very heavy hail to rain down, such as has not been in Egypt since its founding until now. Therefore sin now, and gather your livestock and all that you have in the field. For the hail shall come down on every man and every animal which is found in the field, and is not brought home, and they shall die. 20. He who feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his livestock flee to the houses. But he who did not regard the word of the Lord left his servants and his livestock in the field. 29. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven, and there may be that there may be hail in all the land of Egypt, on man, on beast, and on every herb of the field, throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched out his rod toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and fire darted to the ground. And the Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt. 24. So there was hail and fire mingled with the hail, so very heavy that there was none like it in all the land of Egypt, since it became a nation. 25. And the hail struck throughout the whole land of Egypt all that was in the field, both man and beast, and the hail struck every herb of the field, and broke every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, there was no hail. 27. And Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron and said to them, I have sinned this time. The Lord is righteous and my people and I are wicked. Therefore, eight, I'm sorry, verse 28, entreat the Lord that there may be no more mighty thundering and hail for it is enough. I will let you go and you shall stay no longer. 29. So Moses said to him, as soon as I have gone out of the city, I will spread out my hands to the Lord. The thunder will cease, and there will be no more hail, that you may know that the earth is the Lord's. 30. But as for you and your servants, I know that you will not yet fear the Lord God. 31. Now the flax and the barley were struck, for the barley was in the head, and the flax was in bud. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 32, but the wheat and the spelt were not struck, for they are late crops. So Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh and spread out his hands to the Lord. Then the thunder and the hail ceased, and the rain was not poured on the earth. 34, and when Pharaoh saw that 
saw that the rain, the hail, and the thunder had ceased, he sinned yet more, and he hardened his heart, he and his servants. So the heart of Pharaoh was hard. Neither would he let the children of Israel go, as the Lord had spoken by Moses. <coughs> Pardon me. Chapter 10. Now the Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the hearts of his servants, that I may show these signs of mine before him. Verse 2. And that you may tell in the hearing of your sons and your sons' sons the mighty things I have done in Egypt, and my signs which I have done among them, that you may know that I am the Lord. 3. So Moses and Aaron came into Pharaoh, and he said, and said to him, Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go, that I may that they may serve me. 4. Or else, if you refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow I will bring locusts into your territory. And they shall cover the face of the earth, so that no one will be able to see the earth. And they shall eat the residue of what is left, which remains to you from the hail. And they shall eat every tree. <coughs> Pardon me. Which grows up for you out of the field. They shall fill your houses, the houses of all your servants, and the houses of all the Egyptians, which neither your fathers nor your fathers' fathers have seen since the day that they were on the earth to this day. And he turned and went out from Pharaoh. Then Pharaoh's servants said to him, How long shall this man be a snare to us? Let the man go. Let the men go, that they may serve the Lord their God. Do you not know that Egypt is destroyed? Verse 8. So Moses and Aaron were brought before again to Pharaoh, and he said to them, Go, serve the Lord your God. Who are the ones that are going? And Moses said, We will go with our young and our old, with our sons and our daughters, with our flocks and our herds, we will go. For we must hold a feast to the Lord. 10. Then he said to them, The Lord had better be with you when I let you and your little ones go. Beware, for evil is ahead of you. 11. Not so. Go now, you who are men, and serve the Lord, for that is what you desired. And they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. 12. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, that they may come upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land, all that the hail has left. So Moses stretched out his rod over the land of Egypt, and the Lord brought an east wind on the land all that day and all that night. When it was morning, the east wind brought the locust. And the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested on all the territory of Egypt. They were very severe. Previously there had been no such locusts as they, as they, nor shall there be such af after them. Verse 15. For they covered the face of the whole earth, so that the land was darkened. And they ate every herb of the land, and all the fruit of the trees, which the hail had left. So there remained nothing green on the trees or on the plants of the field throughout all the land of Egypt. 16. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste, and said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now, therefore, please forgive my sin only this once, and entreat the Lord your God that he may take away from me this death only. So he went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord, and the Lord turned a very strong west wind, which took the locusts away and blew them into the Red Sea. There remained not one locust in all the territory of Egypt, but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the children of Israel go. 21. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, darkness which may even be felt. 22. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt. Three days. 23. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. 24. Then Pharaoh called to Moses and said, Go, serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and your herds be kept back. Let your little ones also go with you. 
25, but Moses said, you must also give us sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. 26, our livestock also shall go with us. Not a hoof shall be left behind, for we must take some of them to serve the Lord our God. And even we do not know with what we must serve the Lord until we arrive there. 27, but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he would not let them go. Then Pharaoh said to them, get away from me, take heed to yourselves and see my face no more. For in the day you see my face, you shall die. Verse 29 and last. So Moses said, you have spoken well. I will never see your face again. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. As we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ is every hearer. Hallelujah and glory to God in the highest. Father, we thank you for this word in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, that according to Psalm 107, verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Thank you for sending us your word, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you that as we have received your word, we have been healed and we have been delivered in the name of Jesus Christ from every destruction in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed and believed in Jesus' name. And now Psalm 23, today the Amplified. And it reads, The Lord is my shepherd, to feed, guide, and shield me. I shall not lack. He makes me lie down in fresh, tender, green pastures. He leads me beside the still and restful waters. Verse 3, he refreshes and restores my life, myself. He leads me in the path of righteousness, uprightness, and right standing with him, not for my earning it, but for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the deep, sunless valley of the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil, for you are with me, your rod to protect, and your staff to guide. They comfort me. 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My brimming cup runs over. Verse 6 and last. Surely, or only goodness, mercy, and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life, and through the length of my days the house of the Lord and his presence shall be my dwelling place. Amen, amen, amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed as we pray is every hearer. And let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, O Lord, for being our shepherd, for feeding and guiding us that we do not lack. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for making us lie down in fresh, tender, green pastures, leading us beside the still and restful waters. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, for refreshing and restoring our lives, for leading us in the paths of righteousness and right standing with you, O Lord, not because we've earned it, but for your name's sake, in the name of Jesus Christ. And yes, though we walk through the deep, sunless valley of the shadow of death, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, O Lord, that we will fear no evil or dread, for you are with us, your rod to protect and your staff to guide us and comfort us in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for preparing a table before us in the presence of our enemies. We thank you, Lord Jesus, and then we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, for anointing our head with oil and allowing our brimming cup to run over. Surely, in the name of Jesus Christ, only goodness, mercy, and unfailing love shall follow us all the days of our lives and through the length of our days. The house of the Lord and his presence shall be our dwelling place. Thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ for blessing us in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah and glory to God. In the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. And we pray, Father, that every prayer has been answered. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. We give you glory.